Here is a range of colors that I've selected for drawing the yellow rose and hummingbird. I am using the butternut shade of pastel matte paper for this demonstration. Here I've selected a very light green for the outer edges of the rose petals. The area I'm working in is rather small, so I'm carefully outlining the uh, petal of the rose. I'm switching to a slightly darker shade of green that I'm going to use on the outside edges of the petals. I'm adding the darker shade on the edges because there will be dark green leaves in the background and the petals are slightly transparent and that green is uh, showing through the edges of the yellow rose. I'm going to speed this up a little bit as I begin outlining the petals in the center of the rose using a shade of brown ochre and shades of tan to develop some of the shading occurring between the petals. At this time, I'm only blocking in the shape slightly and I'm adding some shading between some of the petals, but I'm not trying to do any blending yet. I will add shades of yellow over the petals and then blend it with the brown beneath it using my fingers or a paper stump. I also like to use sponge applicators to do uh, a lot of my blending. I'm adding some yellow to each of my petals and blending it with the brown uh, shadow in the petal to give it a natural shadow being cast from the petals above them. Once I have all the petals blocked in with some color and shading, I'll be able to move on and begin developing some of the leaves in the background and then I'll come back to complete the rows. I want to block in some of the leaves before I finish blending the rose petals. I like to have all my elements in place before I finish the picture. It seems to help me see what areas need more saturation of color or lighter colors. I've blocked in some of the leaves that are around the hummingbird, so now I can continue developing some of the petals in the rows. So please follow along for the next minute as I finish the rose petals.
now that the petals have better form and are shaded completely, I'm going to move on to complete the background leaves. The painting will begin to have greater depth and dimension as we develop the dark leaves in the background. The flower will appear to be forward and the darker leaves will recede to the background. At this point, I'm pretty happy how the background has come together, so I'd like to move on and develop the Rufus Hummingbird. I'm going to darken in his beak and add some of the darker values around his eye and some of the darker patterns in his neckline and around his head. I'll add some of the white areas just to have a base layer for the feathers and I'll use some of the browns and ochred brown to develop the shading in the bird's head. I'm using my black pastel pencil to add some of the feather shapes in his head but I'm coming back with greens and turquoise and even blues to add some of the iridescent reflections in his feathers. I'm using some light gray to show the separations between the feathers and his wings. I'm going to use a combination of violets to shade the wings and I'm using a blending stump to blend these areas together. I'll continue to define his wings with a little more details and then I can move on to finish the body area of the bird. I'm using a dark green for his back and tail feathers. I'll use browns and copper colors to shade his chest and tail feathers. Once I've defined the patterns in his feathers, this painting will be complete. I hope you have enjoyed this short time lapse of drawing a yellow rose and a hummingbird. If you like this demonstration, please leave me a comment below and don't forget to press like and if you haven't subscribed, please do. And I'll see you next time.